Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Overeaters Anonymous Special Focus Recovery from Relapse Meeting. Today is Tuesday, the 15th of March, 2022, and we are absolutely delighted to have our speaker, Amanda C., with us. Amanda lives in Manchester, and uh, she's lived in Manchester ever since she came to OA in September 2011. So it's over to Amanda now to share her experience, strength, and hope. Hello, and um, thank you for um, such a warm, a warm, um, a warm welcome. And I'm just, just having a quick um, look around. Um, it's, it's so. It's so important for me, I realise, to um, to sort of feel this this kind of connection. Um, and actually, it, it it is often quite overwhelming for me to feel this. So uh, I'm just going to take a, a, a little minute um, just just to be here with that. Um, yeah. So I'm Amanda. Um, I'm just short, a few months shy of 60 years of age. Uh, so yes, so I bring I bring myself today um, as as I am. Um, the the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, that's a really um refreshing thing for me to be able to say uh say to and and i think a very big part of my unfolding recovery so what what i can offer you know to you as as many many people have offered to me is 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 to share um my experience strength and hope um, in relation to um, recovery, you know what what that what mine looks like and feels like to me. Um, as I'm assuming, it will be different to yours, although it might have similarities. But I'm bringing mine, and also where where relapse fits into my unfolding experience and journey of of recovery. And it's been um, it's been a really powerful thing to connect with this because I I uh, I realise I I hadn't actually connected that much with this idea of of relapse and what what that meant. So um, thank you for that opportunity um, for for me to sort of share what relapse seems to mean for me, um, what that experience has been like and how i've how i've moved through that and what i've learned or i'm learning from that um so thank you um i'm a compulsive eater um i i realize now that i that i that i know that I thought I knew it before, but I, at this moment in time, in my stage of my recovery, I, I know that I'm a compulsive eater. And I understand what that kind of means to me and my life. Um, I, in terms of what that means for me and what it's looked like um I, I i grew up in a in an environment that i found confusing um unsafe at times um there was a lot of anxiety knocking around and and food became part of um of, of a, a source of comfort for, for me from a very early age um, I didn't actually realize it for a, for, for a long time, but it started off, you know, big portions, food was love, that kind of thing. And then 
as I as I um, as I became older um, in my in my very early teenage years and um, uh, my weight started increasing and and new aspects of the disease of the disease started um, showing themselves so um, compulsive eating and then I, I thought I discovered something completely unique to me and um, and wondrous that um, I could eat all this food and then if I if I made myself sick it was like free eating I thought I, I, for a short while I was I was on top of the world I thought oh god this is this is the way to go um, and Hen started a cycle of many, 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 many years of um, dieting, getting a grip, trying this initiative, trying that initiative, um, the whole the whole shenanigans, which um, I would imagine that um, many of you can kind of connect with. Um, what I really um, it boiled down to that was that I actually thought I was um, a, a, a bad and mad person. Um, and I spent the, the, the next kind of 40 years trying to fix myself and rid myself of that, trying to become um, an, an, an okay person. And I never could, I never could, I never could kind of sort it. Um, I first came to OA in 2011, and um, I, I believe that I'd started my recovery journey before I came to OA um, through, through other kind of things. Um, and through that, I was introduced to OA. And what I, what I experienced there was things that I'd never ever experienced before, which was um, a, a space where I, I felt that I could relate to people who, who were talking about similar things to me. Um, not all of it looked exactly like mine, but there was enough there. And the other, the other thing that I um, really, really got when I first came to OA was some, um, some ways to be. And, and, and I think at that time I, I heard about the steps, I got a sponsor um, and, I, and I began, I think, my um, OA uh, recovery journey which for me was around physical recovery. I found a stability around food that I'd never ever had before. I had structure, I had, um, I had a, sense of, um, a sense of freedom and I, and I, and I started to trust and um, connect with, 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 with people around me. Um, after about three years, um, it, it, a, whole, a series of events happened, or that's how, I'm, how I see it. Because I think the, the caveat to all of this is, this is me trying to make sense of something, you know, trying to tell a story. Um, and I realized that actually a lot of this is, is, is beyond my, my sense making. It's beyond my concrete understanding, but this is how it seems to me um, in, in order to make sense of it. So um, a, whole, a whole load of things happened. Um, my, my dad died, which absolutely shook my world and really changed a lot of things. There was things going on in my personal life. I was going through a, another life stage. I was going through menopause. It was a, it was a, it was a whole load of things, and and what happened in terms of my relationship with um, with program and and relapse was that it was um I would describe it now as a, a, a process of disconnection. 
So for me, relapse, when I was thinking about this, was a kind of slow, <laughs> insidious, creeping up kind of experience. It, 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 it wasn't something that I thought, right, everything's fine and hunky dory and then what and then I pick up and I pick up something and then suddenly I'm in relapse and it's all it's all gone to pot it that was not my experience of relapse as as I now reflect on it in terms of food again it was it was a gradual reintroduction of the place of food as a comfort food as a solution, food as a distraction, all of those kind of things. Um, so what changed over that time was what I was eating for sure and how I was eating, but it wasn't this suddenly, oh my gosh, there I am, I'm back. It was, and I think that was, that's um, a very insidious nature of, 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 my disease anyway that it's very gradual and sneaky and uh creeps up in terms of um spiritual relapse in doing this what i realized was i don't think i was in relapse because what i actually uh reflect on now if i think about spiritual in terms of reliance on a higher power and uh, and and the things that i am getting a, a you know much more of a sense of in, in my current experience it wasn't relapse i'd never actually got there i'd never really given and handed over my will to a higher power in terms of the way i was running my life so for me that that sense of relapse is it about is it about food is it about picking up a particular ingredient or is it is it a you know a, a broader experience and i think in in thinking about this um i definitely now i'm relating to relapse in a much broader way than um than i ever have before and that that seems to be i don't have a have a have a clear cut this is what it is but this feels to be some a, a, a part of the piece of of a growing recovery for me that absolutely it is about food and eating as 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 a as a key component but it's for me it's not the only part and and i and i think that's uh, something that i continue to to um to speak about uh, to to experience so so a disconnect um the other the, the other thing another thing that um that has has a has really kind of occurred to me through through this process was um the part that um that the program and my relationship to the program had in my in in my um, in my disconnect, um, and how fear based my relationship to the program actually was. That um, I I could get the sense of powerlessness. I could get the sense of of um, inventory, but actually through through my experiences i i have increasingly realized that a lot of my um relationship with with program was fear based and that feels also significant as part of um of my continuing recovery about redefining <laughs> and re-experiencing my relationship with the program and what the program actually offers and and how it works so i had a period of about seven years where i was not particularly connected to program um i still had friends in program i i i was connected with recovery through other through other uh things in my life but 
um, but I wasn't working the program. I wasn't living the program. And um, what actually sort of, I suppose, brought me back was it was in, um, it was at the tail end of 2020. Um, my, my, my eating and my weight had, had escalated. Um, I wasn't, um, I wasn't purging, but I was binging and food was in, in that horrible, horrible place again. Um, at the time, my relationship to myself was, was, was pretty dire. I wasn't actually bothered about the eating. I wasn't bothered about the weight. I didn't have that 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 level of um, of interest in that department. What was killing me, absolutely, was um, was my emotional uh, distress. That was what eventually brought me back to um, to the program and um, and fellowship brought me back so through some beautiful friends that i'd retained through my um life uh they we we spoke and um and the the stars aligned that's all i can say I, I wish i could say it was this and it was that i actually don't know why it was at, at that particular time but it was and I spoke to a beautiful friend of mine because I thought, I know, I'll just do a quick step four. I'll just do a quick step four on this, on this thing that's eating me up and killing me, uh, this resentment and this fear and this, and, and this beautiful friend said, are you in the food? I know, I know, but just let me do a step four. <laughs> just let me get rid of it and, um, and actually, um, it was like this sinking feeling, the game is up. And, um, and I came back. And the, the gift of lockdown, as I know many of my friends have experienced, the gift of lockdown, because what happened is I, 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 all, of the, all of the things that I distracted with my, myself with had peeled away. So I couldn't be uh, really helpful at work. I couldn't be doing community work to feel like I was being a good person. You know, I couldn't be distracting all over there, doing this, doing that. And I was left with myself, my miserable self. And the gift of that um, is, has sort of been phenomenal. And the gift of Zoom, I could, I could jump onto a meeting and I could come back in. And that's, so the last 12, 14 months have, um, have been such a, um, a revelation to, 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 to me. And this is, I think, where, um, so I, you know, in terms of what did I do? I got a sponsor. I got a sponsor. I, I got out my book again and I followed the instructions, I followed the manual. I learnt um, that food wasn't really my problem, it was my solution. Now I knew that a little bit, but I just became clearer on it. I just got a clearer sort of um, connection with that. I, I got a clarity around my abstinence that, again, wasn't revelatory to me, but it was, it, it was the clarity around it. And I, I, I also believe that my, my experience, you know, in the field <laughs> over all of these years, just added another piece of information that absolutely, uh, clarified for me uh, my compulsive um, my, com my status as a compulsive eater so 10 more minutes, Ten more minutes Amanda okay so this is this is kind of where I think um, that that I I have kind of got and where my recovery is 
So um, again, in terms of um, of of my realization, I've got a much clearer sense now of this idea of self and selfish that was a big barrier for me it wasn't that i didn't think i was selfish or self-centered it's that i thought that was all i was and actually what i through through the program now i i can really really see the nuanced thing about what self self means for me and how that is um part of my my dilemma my 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 problem um reliance that's that remains a tricky one for me and i'm working on it through working the program through its very simple aspects of you know i can't um tools of inventory and handing over i I, I, I realized that actually I had a uh, no trust and a great deal of huge amount of fear in a notion of a higher power. And so I, I actually had to do quite, quite a lot of work around, um, around developing a relationship. I have a very tender and evolving relationship with a higher power. Um, I don't have a need to actually know what that that is, um, but that's something that is becoming stronger and stronger. This this idea of a reliance on something outside of of me, because my self reliance was is has been deeply embedded, and what I can be now is much more compassionate to myself about that fact and in being that that actually is helping me build my trust and let go a little bit of um of of of, of the reliance of the doing it and and i think um that was a that was a hard one for me because to be kind in that place because what i heard and what i read in, in the book was it's because you're selfish it's because you're controlling it's because and actually through developing a more compassionate sort of journey through this i can um i know that i still that's still the root but i can be kinder to myself in that in that um in that journey and for me that is absolutely feels like a game changer a game changer um and i and i and i now can see a difference between compassion and um i used to think that was indulgent or it, 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 if i was compassionate i wasn't doing the work i wasn't working hard enough and actually none of those are um are are, are, are true for me um so in terms of what is what is changing is a huge thing piece for me is relationships my relationship with myself is evolving and um and and is you know from years and years of of loathing you know i think and and deeply deeply critical um it, it didn't always seem like it was that but it was actually very deeply embedded and that's changing and um i think i actually said to my sponsor the uh, it, it, i said undercover i didn't tell anybody private uh, publicly but i said um, i think i'm quite blessed to be me you know and, and then thought oh, actually i think i am uh, so that whole relationship with myself is is changing with with my family um i am in the midst of working through my family of origin stuff it's painful it's painful and it's frightening and it's raw and that's um that's i think something that um, my recovery is allowing me and helping me to actually go there and experience those things um not shy away from them not love them i don't want to do all of this you know i'm 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 absolutely not um 
Whee, recovery is wonderful. I'd rather not have to do all of this, you know, but that's the reality of my life. Um, and that's where, where I'm at. And um, I think for me, somebody, uh, another uh, person I know who I care deeply for said, it's sounding like it's painfully wonderful, Amanda. <laughs> I thought, that's it, yeah. You know, comfortably wonderful, uh, comfortably uh, vulnerable. So if I talk about, I think my, my recovery, I would say it's, it's, it's real and it's raw and, it, and, it's, and it's everywhere in my life. Because for me, that's what recovery has to be. I absolutely love being in meetings and with fellows and, and um, you know, in, 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 in safe spaces. And, but that's not, that's not where I, I, I live and it's not where I want to live actually, you know? So for me, um, recovery is absolutely about be, be, being, being in the world and taking recovery as, uh, as as my way of being in in the world um and i think my 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 sort of final thing is um is that i'm getting a clarity around what is my responsibility you know nobody else is going to do this for me um and what is not and what it, what is not mine and um and and really starting to not just recognize, but be able to separate the, the, the two. And that for me is, is, um, is a huge thing. So I, th I think my final thing is, um, cause they all, are, they all started with R. I don't know where that came from. The R factor um, is, is about relaxing. And re for me, sometimes uh, this idea of relapse can be a, 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 a heavy thing to to carry you know it's like oh relapse is is, is the the worst thing in in the world and um and I can absolutely see the the, the learning and the and the you know the that I have got from uh an experience of of relapse and as I am truly leaning into trusting a higher power that I can relax a little bit and uh, if the deal is that higher power's got me then higher power's got me and that that is um, that has to be the case so thank you very much mm, thank you so much Amanda for that uh, just beautiful message of depth and weight and sharing your experience, strength and hope. I'd like to read one thing from the, uh, from the big book. It's on page 152 from the chapter of vision for you. You are going to meet these new friends in your own community near you, alcoholics or overeaters are dying helplessly like people in a sinking ship. If you live in a large place, there's hundreds high and low, rich and poor. There are future fellows of Alcoholics Anonymous or OA. Among them, you will make lifelong friends. You will be bound to them with new and wonderful ties for you will escape disaster together and you will commence shoulder to shoulder your common journey. Then you will know what it means to give of yourself that others may survive and rediscover life. You will learn the full meaning of love thy neighbor as thyself. Thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you.